Hey, welcome everybody. Chris Petri here. We're having a great time. We're having a lot of fun creating this seascape painting. And uh, actually, we're going to cover two main themes we wanted to uh, focus in on. And the first is making sure we get beautiful depth in our painting. So we're going to first focus in on getting a lot of depth in our painting, a three-dimensional feel of, and quality into this watercolor design that we're doing here. That's the first thing we're going to do. And then the second thing, we're going to make sure we mix lots of colors. We're going to make lots of beautiful uh, grayed down colors into our painting. So we're going to be mixing warm and cool everywhere, which means, you know, warm colors, earth tones mixed in with our cool colors, like our blues and our greens. And that's going to give us a wonderful feel of uh, gorgeous uh, mixing of colors throughout this whole painting, warm and cool colors everywhere. And uh, that really is a pleasing composition when we're finished. And uh, you'll see how we create this... Um, uh, wonderful painting. Let's get started. And again, thanks for coming along and painting with me. And if you're just here for the first time, welcome. Thank you for stopping by and maybe just watching. And maybe you're going to decide to pick up some brushes and some paints uh, and in the coming weeks and decide to try some watercolor paintings. And this might be a perfect painting to start with. You can paint this painting over and over again if you want. Um, or, you know, maybe you're, uh, you've been painting for a while and you haven't done a seascape before like this one. So maybe this is the perfect painting for you too as well. So whatever uh, situation, whatever your uh, goals are and, and what you want to do with watercolor, I'm sure we can all have fun here. Whether we're just watching or we're going to actually paint along with this. Um, it's going to be a very fun time. So let's get started, okay? Be right back. Alright, so we just uh, saw the finished painting, and so now we're going to kind of work our way forward here to try to get to this finished, beautiful seascape uh, painting we're going to create. First thing I'd like to do is just mention what paper I use. I'm using the Arches Rough Paper. Um, it comes in all different sizes, but you can never um, go wrong with just looking for the Arches uh, watercolor paper with the orange cover, just like this cover here. And every time, it doesn't matter what size the paper is, the orange is going to be your... Uh, color you key in on orange. This happens to be a 7 by 10 here on this um, Photocopy that I have but the one we're using now is like a 11 by 14 paper that we're using So but always remember the orange cover is the cover you're looking for for this style paper Which is arches rough paper and it's a 300 gram 140 pound So that's the first thing we'll kind of just We'll cover what paper we're going to use that's important so you can kind of we're going to use that rough paper to our advantage to get some really nice effects on our seascape. And then the next thing we're going to do is basically just we'll cover a few brushes that we're going to use. So for the most part I like to use um, I, I use two, I like these travel brushes a lot. I use them, I go on vacation, I um, travel a little bit here and there, sometimes I'll go locally and I'll paint. And these are the um, travel brushes which I buy the three pack of the Charles Reed Escada Reserva Travel brushes, they work fantastic. Beautiful brushes, sable brushes. And then I also use the Da Vinci Pure Kalinske um, travel brushes. And they're, uh, the, the number for these are 1503 Germany. So it's Pure Kalinske um, brush hairs, travel brush. They're plastic, they're light, they're really fun to use. And uh, I have a number 10 here and a number 12. And then these uh, Charles Reed travel brushes are a number 10 and a number 4. So like a really fine point. So I'll use these four brushes for the most part. And uh, that's our brushes we're going to use. Uh, we have the Schmincke palette. And I've customized it a little bit. And again, any of these items that you see here, if you want more information, all you have to do is just type in my name, Chris Petri, into YouTube on the YouTube search bar, Chris Petri, and then you just type in any information you want to learn about. So if you want to learn about my palette, you just type in Chris Petri palette. You'll see probably five, six, maybe even ten videos on my different palettes I use uh, and the colors that I use too. So you could even type in Chris Petri watercolor paint. You'll find that I'll have probably three or four or five videos on all the different colors I use and what brands I use of paint. If you type in Chris Petri brushes, 
you'll see that I cover my brushes on other videos. So I have a lot of videos in my archives. You just type in, again, my name, and then you just type in the word that you're looking for more information on. Paper, again, paints, palettes, brushes, just my name and what you're look, looking to learn a little bit more about as far as what I'm using and what I'm doing here on my channel. And you can use that. YouTube is great because all my videos are archived, so I have over 500 videos in my archives and you just go in there and you can just search my name and whatever you're looking for. Chris Petrie flower paintings, you'll see maybe a hundred flower paintings I've done or seascape paintings, you'll find maybe a hundred seascape paintings I've done or boat paintings, whatever it is. So that's the fun thing about YouTube. You always have tons of information to work with and um, let's keep going forward here. So we have our seascape we're going to do and then we're just going to talk about a few key things we're going to focus on when we're when we're creating this painting. First thing we're going to really focus in on is uh, depth of painting. And uh, I have my Sharpie marker which is running out of ink. So we'll just start here. Depth or three dimensional quality. So this is kind of like the first thing we're going to focus on is this painting is really going to take advantage of using depth or three-dimensional quality for the design of this painting. So basically we're talking about design and then whenever you're creating a painting, no matter what it is, whether it's seascapes, flower paintings, landscapes, um, you know, architecture, city scenes, um, still life paintings, whatever it is, you can always remember, you can kind of come up with a few key elements that you want to focus in on and try to really exploit and push the limits of to kind of get your painting looking a little more exciting and um, that can really make a big difference in your paintings. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to really key in on the depth or three-dimensional quality of this painting and then maybe we're going to pick one other thing. We're going to pick the second thing. So this will be the primary thing we're going to really... So this is our primary focus right here. Primary focus. Our primary focus right here is the depth and three-dimensional quality of this composition that we're going to paint. The second thing we want to do is sort of like say to ourselves, well, all right, we're going to really push the bounds of three-dimensional quality. What is another thing we can kind of introduce into this composition that's going to really take it to the next level? And I think another thing we can really utilize is color. Color mixes. Color mixes. That can really help get our paintings looking really beautiful and exciting. So we're going to focus in on color mixes and then we can break that, might, we might break that down into maybe a few subgroups. Maybe we might say color mixes and then we might say we want to um, create um, we want to create beautiful gray gray, uh, gray tones gray tones in our painting. And what I mean by that is it's kind of easy to just go in and grab colors out of our palette and put them onto our painting. But if we can kind of utilize the beauty of graying down mixtures when we're painting so that we're not just using straight paint out of the uh, palette, but kind of mixing a little bit, mixing some colors here and there to get different interesting colors as we're painting our uh, composition. So let's kind of keep those two things uh, really in uh, in our minds as we go forward here. So if we can keep these two uh, items here, primary focus is really the depth and three-dimensional quality. That's going to be what we really are uh, shooting for here. And the second thing we want to make sure is our color mixes. Let's create some beautiful gray tones in our painting to kind of really take it to the next level. It's just easy to grab some colors out of our palette and throw them on the paper and say, oh, good, done. We did a landscape or a seascape or whatever it is. Does that make sense? But let's take our time and really create some beautiful mixes of colors. And we'll, I'll share everything as we go in this uh, video. So I'm hoping you're going to stay here with me for the next hour or so. And we're going to create a beautiful painting. And uh, you'll see how we kind of use those two, again, those two main focus points of primary, pri primarily our depth and three-dimensional quality and second our color mixes, you know, mixing beautiful grays and uh, actually, you know, it really 
using our colors really carefully and thinking them through so that we kind of make a more interesting looking uh, watercolor painting. So let's get started and uh, we're going to have tons of fun here on this video. Okay, so we'll be right back. All right, so we're going to get started with our uh, hash marks on our border of our painting. And the first thing I wanted to mention, as we get started, let's take a um, mat, a custom, or not even a custom, this is a standard mat that you might buy in a local art supply store, framing shop, or even your big box uh, art supply stores in your area where you live. If you buy some standard size mats that come already in a little small plastic package and you take them out, and this way you can put them onto your paper and then mark them onto your paper and then maybe you make your tape a little bit larger than the actual uh, window of your mat. This way you have a little bit of extra room to move around your mat when you're done and you're going to put this into a frame. So you're going to frame your paintings when you're done if they come out good. So let's do that. Let's keep in mind try to get your painting set up so that it fits within a standard size mat because that's great you know it's just you can find a mat in your local store in a frame and then you have everything ready to go you put it over your painting and then you put it in a frame and you're all set so the first thing I did here is I wanted to kind of say to myself alright we're gonna do this seascape we're, we're primarily focused on the depth of the painting and also, too, we want to um, make sure that we're um, kind of placing everything in the right locations as we go. So what I did was I just made some marks on my tape. And I kind of thought to myself, maybe the ocean would be a little bit further out like this. So this will be our ocean. So I can just put ocean here at this hash mark. So it's a little bit past halfway. So if you can kind of see the, the paper, maybe the halfway point of the paper is about here. Let's push the ocean horizon line a little bit further out. So just so that it's a little bit past halfway. That usually tends to look good if you can make something a little bit past the halfway mark or a little bit uh, before the halfway mark when you're doing seascapes or landscapes and things like that. That's just a good, uh, you know, kind of point to keep in mind when you're doing um, landscapes and seascapes to try to maybe break up your division of your uh, painting. Uh, if you have large spaces like sky and land or ocean and sky, try to keep them a little bit, um, uh, you know, different. Like you wouldn't want to split the paper in half. Sometimes that doesn't look too good. If it's, it's a little more pleasing, most artists would agree. Most professional artists would agree, art historians, um, people that um, are, you know, judges in art competitions and in galleries and things like that, they'll usually tell you the paintings look, look a little better when they're on the wall, uh, hanging up and uh, looking beautiful. It looks a little better if you have your, um, your space divisions of your painting uh, not quite symmetrical, which would be halfway. So you want to go a little past halfway, either higher or lower as far as your horizon line for your ocean. So for this one I decided let's go a little past halfway and our ocean ocean horizon line is going to be about a little past halfway up on the paper. So then that's what I'll do. I'm going to get this started. I'll take a, a ruler and just go right across. What I'll do though is I want to measure it. I want to get this pretty accurate. So if you're going to do um, this painting. Let's make sure that, that the that everything is pretty much level straight uh, across the picture horizontally. So if I just go over here that's uh, nine centimeters. So you can use the metric or the standard nine or probably fifteen and, uh, or uh, one, two, three and a half inches. So it's about three and a half inches or nine centimeters. And I'll go over here and do that same measurement, nine centimeters, just so we get a straight line. And we're not kind of tipped like this or tipped like this. We want to make sure we're pretty much straight. You can do it by eye too if you want. Sometimes it's you can do things by eye if you feel like you can get it pretty accurate. But let's get that line there. So that's going to be our 
far distant ocean horizon line. And then uh, we're going to actually do some mountains here. So now that we have our distant horizon line here, I'll just maybe erase that hash mark there a little bit. Okay, so we have that. And then maybe I'll just do a little bit of land up here. So we're going to have a little bit of land, and that's going to come down into the water, like this, like that. So it's always good to get things uh, started correctly with some hash marks. And then maybe there's a little bit of uh, some trees over here too. So we can have some trees along the... mountainous areas here you know, on the coastline coming down. And then uh, the rest we're going to have as ocean. And then uh, maybe we'll have a little touch of some more land. Maybe an outcropping of a little small bit of rocks and something like that just to give it a little more interesting uh, breaking up this line a little bit then um, we're gonna try to over here let's get some some land started over here some rocks let's do some rocks like that so we're gonna do some rocks here down into the water so I'm just trying to plan out uh, sort of uh, where I want my uh, rock formations here. And there's going to be some little bits of water maybe splashing up here and there where these rocks are. So we don't worry too much about a straight line here. And uh, we're going to have some other bits of uh, rocks and things like that. So we're not going to get too concerned about just making a straight line. We'll leave this line broken apart a lot over here. Just we'll get a somewhat of a somewhat of a level line, you know, like this, but not incredible. We're not going to draw that line straight across. We're going to remember we're going to leave some splashes of water and a little bit of rocks and other things going on there to make it a little more interesting. And then uh, what else do we have here? So then Maybe over here there's some more bit of land. So this is more rocks along the ocean here. So this will be some rocks here along the foreground. And then we're just going to have another bit of rock here coming down into the water. Like that. And a few more rocks over here just to... So just to make it interesting, some rock formations here in the foreground. So we have some foreground here right close to us as if we were sitting here painting this right along the beach and the ocean. Some rock formations here. And then as we go further out into the ocean, we're going to see more colors and light, maybe some light splashing across the water. And uh, so we're going to have a really nice looking uh, bit of light in this painting. So then after we have these, pretty much these bits of good information, we're, we're going to paint the rest of the details in. But we're just getting a rough uh, sketch in of what we want to do. So the same thing with our... Um, with our uh, sky. I'm going to leave my sky very loose, very free. I don't want to um, start getting into really fancy looking skies, but I will do a little bit of um, um, interesting cloud formations because I want to sort of have the cloud formations um, going off into the distance, getting smaller and smaller. And this just happens to be a day when the clouds are basically kind of lining up across the sky in a horizontal fashion. Sometimes you'll see clouds, they're off on an angle. So it all depends on the cloud formations going across the sky and how they're going to look in your scene. 
you can always change that knowing that you control your watercolor painting you control the design of your painting and you can take your painting and say I'm gonna take my clouds and make them look more interesting by setting them up in the sky the way I want to we always know cloud formations can be on angles like this or like this or they can be straight across the sky like this I'm gonna to choose to paint this painting with the cloud formations going horizontally and that's all no need to really keep going on and on about that but you know as you paint and learn more and more about um, painting your paintings and skies and your washes of your seascapes and landscapes and things like that you can you can, you're the you're the artist you can create things that are going to make your painting look more beautiful and more interesting by um, just taking notice of nature and then from there you make your decisions on that knowledge that you have okay so now we have our sketch done looks fine we have the major information we wanted to in this painting completed with our sketch so I think we're really good so let's not uh, delay let's take a break once we're done with our break now I'm gonna take a five ten minute break and then we'll get right into the painting of this and you're gonna have a really beautiful and fun time here with me as we go through this and we'll kind of just describe everything as we go step by step we'll cover everything what colors I'm using how the washes are gonna go on here whether we're gonna paint this a la prima or if we're gonna do this uh, glazing technique style the glazing method or the a la prima method I think we'll go with the a la prima method actually that's gonna work a little better for me on this painting but I'm not 100% sold on that right now so maybe think about it before we come back here we're taking a break now maybe to yourself think about it look think of the, think of the sketch here and say to yourself do you think it's gonna look better in a la prima or is it gonna be better doing this in a glazing technique style so that's one thing you can kind of consider as you take a quick break and you come back and you're getting ready to paint um, but I'm already kind of feeling pretty strongly about using the glaze uh, the a la prima technique here on this painting because I think I just want to get in there and start doing some darks and um, and then going from there okay all right so we're gonna be right back and let's uh, take a break quick and we'll be right back in a second okay so we're getting started again and let's get our paints mixed up here so we're just gonna mix up our um, colors as we go here and uh, the first thing I'll do is um, I just have a, um, a damp sponge so I wet the sponge wring it out and I have a damp sponge next to my water uh, glass here so I'm using a glass of water here I also have a water container over here to my right hand side which I'm normally used to using but I like to leave a water glass here too as well just so you can kind of see how I'm working with my brush and that I'm taking water off the brush all the time when I'm rinsing my brush taking off a little bit of water going into the palette so hopefully this will just kind of really um, uh, help everyone to see that I, I really do check off a lot of water off my brush I rinse the brush off and I always hit the sponge here first or if I have um, maybe like a tissue or some paper towels or whatever but I'm always taking some water off the brush because I find that if I just go in and rinse off the brush and then go right into the palette it tends to flood the palette out with a lot of water so that really is a problem and then it also makes the washes very watery looking and not to the to the best um, consistency that we would need to make really good looking washes on our paper on our paintings our compositions so let's kind of just keep that in mind and let's get started here with our washes now the best thing I find is with watercolor paintings if you can mix your washes ahead of time a little bit first that really is a big uh, um, advantage for you because it kind of gives you a little more time than where you can focus in on your painting so you're not really like kind of doing a little bit of your painting and then you're all of a sudden going oh I gotta start mixing more colors and then all of a sudden you're here for five or ten minutes mixing some new colors and all of a sudden it's, it's drying on you over here so if you can keep working uh, on your watercolor painting and kind of making all the washes nice and smooth and seamless as you're going and flowing each wash into the next that's looks that's a little better it looks a little better in your your finished paintings when you're kind of have your colors mixed first 
then you'd go in and you do your painting and then you just if you have to add some little bit of paint here and there into your palette that's fine but I do find if you can mix up your colors first you're going to kind of have a little bit of an advantage it won't slow you down too much because we always know it, it, this makes sense right like we always know watercolor is a fast medium it dries really quick it's not like oil painting or acrylic painting especially oil painting you can paint a couple brush strokes of um, oil paint on your canvas and you can walk away for for an hour for two days come back and it's still moist and you can blend it and do other things with it but watercolor once you put some washes on your paper it's literally drying within minutes so the kind of the real um, critical part of watercolor is being able to work rapidly and quickly uh, and the way you can get a little more quicker and work more rapidly is if you definitely mix your colors first so let's do that so I'm gonna look and say alright I have rocks those are gonna be brown in red so I'm gonna get some red burnt sienna and some brown and there's also some French ultramarine blue for the rocks so we're gonna have rocks that are warm and cool we don't want to make just warm rocks we want warm and cool rocks so that would be burnt umber burnt sienna and French ultramarine blue and that gives us a nice modulation of warm and cool and a little bit of uh, uh, some cerulean blue in there too I think looks good and then uh, what we'll do is let's mix up more of that a lot of French ultramarine blue a lot of burnt umber and a lot of burnt sienna let's get that all in there make up a bunch of a lot of that mix and also some cerulean blue and then kind of mix it out over here okay so now you have plenty of the really the rocks that we're going to be painting in the in the uh, painting here and also in the foreground here there's going to be some lighter color rocks but we'll use this as our base so this is going to be our base mix that we're going to use which again is burnt umber burnt sienna french ultramarine blue and some cerulean blue once you have those three mixed together making it quite a bit of nice um, and I would say you can add lots of burnt sienna to that we're gonna make those rocks kind of more warmer and uh, I think you have it right there you can kind of see that mix lots of darks and then what we'll do is we're gonna we're gonna start here first maybe in the foreground and start to get our darks in there and that's all I'm going to do is get these rocks okay and I always like to have a tissue that I keep handy like so this way you can lighten and darken a little bit here and there so I rinse off some of the Rinse off some of the paint and the water, like that. Maybe even some raw umber here too. Let's use some raw umber. And then don't be afraid to go in and get some darker blues on top here. And there's some more rocks like that, like so. So you're just seeing I'm doing my rock shapes right now. And then as we get down this way here, I'm going to leave some some other rock shapes going in like so. Like that. So essentially I want to start to get some broken paper which is the arches rough paper gives you that nice broken broken edges of paper that kind of give you that like glimmering of light shimmering of light So we have some sparkles of light. Doesn't that look great? And then uh, we'll get a little bit of water. 
and we'll start to bring our dark darks over here. And then as we go across here, we might go a little lighter. So then we might start to think about getting a little bit more lighter and making some of those grayish color rocks. But before we do that, let's come over here. We're, we're going to fire in some darker rocks over here too. Let's get some more of that darker dark. And then you can see, I just get that quick bit of rock shapes there, and then a couple more over here. And a few more rock shapes over here. That looks good, and then we're going to work a little bit over here and get some more darks over here, like so. Then I'm going to rinse off my brush. Now, we'll try to um, add a little bit of um, more cerulean blue. Let's start another mix here, and we'll take some of that mix that we've already used up here and kind of mix it in down here to get ourselves a little more of a cooler mix of colors this way, like that. And then we're going to do that. We're going to add some kind of lighter washes. So we're making a lighter tonal value here. We'll even add some purple. So we'll mix some purple in here, rinse off the brush, add a little bit of purple into that too, into this mix. And that cerulean blue again, maybe a little bit of, now we'll start to mix in a little more uh, viridian green. And since I'm using Viridian, let me add some of that over here and here. And then we'll keep going with our with our lighter mixes. So we're going to try to give ourselves good um, okay I'll use a little bit of extra water here just to get some splashes going I want to start introducing a couple splashes just to okay just for the feeling of water splashing around here and uh, I'm going to start making some kind of the feeling of waves like with my brush with some of the mix that we're using down here What I'll do is I'll make sure I cover the bottom of this here. Let's cover the bottom of the painting right here. So what you'll notice with watercolor is if you can kind of kind of frame out your painting sometimes, if this makes sense, frame out your painting with your washes. So maybe around the edges and the borders of your painting, you don't want to have too much detail at those outer locations where the borders are of your painting. So you're going to want to have those areas kind of really nicely uh, blended right to the edge there like so like that and then you can kind of bring the brush strokes in like this and then we just have some more rocks again these are rocks over here
and they're kind of cool, so we want to have that cerulean blue. And then we can take our our tissue and blot up some to give ourselves a little bit of light. A little bit of light here and there. We can lighten up our washes like that. And then we're going to start to mix in some of that cerulean blue and French ultramarine blue. For the uh, and also some green, some verdian green. So this is where you're going to start to add more color. Time to uh, change out the water. Let's keep our water nice and fresh. some blue and some okay and then we're gonna do some raw umber and again we're trying to mix lots of colors and we're, we're talked we talked about graying down our colors so here we're adding some blue and then some raw umber into that blue and that makes a really nice kind of a grayish color nice toned down a couple bits of light then we might say to ourselves where where would, could we use a little bit of brighter light in the painting to sort of start to make some kind of sunlight coming into the picture where, or, or some areas where we can make a little more light. So let's kind of, let's say over here, maybe we'll have some light patterns here. Maybe we'll have, we'll just kind of make some pencil lines just where we might want to make some light going across the picture. And then here, Okay, like that, and you can lift up a little bit of paint too, like that, and since we are We've painted quite a bit now. We've painted for, you know, 15, 20 minutes already. Let's take a break. And with the alla prima method, which is where we're going in and doing our darks first, and then starting to work with our medium washes, our medium tonal values, you can kind of see that we've been able to work nicely, build up our painting here at the bottom portion of our composition. And then now we'll continue to work up into the sky and the clouds and the ocean here as we go but we started here at the bottom and this is a perfect break time because we have everything kind of done down here that we need to get done that first third of the painting here and then we're going to work on this two thirds up here so we'll work up on the second or you know the second uh, one third so if we have a third here a third here and a third here we'll do two thirds of the painting going forward but let's get that one third of the painting done first then we take a break let this set up a little bit and dry a little bit and we'll do some other details here in the bottom of the painting once we're this dries but for the most part you can kind of see we have a really nice feel of the coastline here some really beautiful dark rocks some uh, ocean colors um, some rocks and stones here in the foreground we're going to make some more um, 
kind of like uh, indications of stones here in the foreground, but right now we're just going to leave it like this and we'll come back and do some more details as you'll see. But uh, this is a perfect time to take a break. So let's take a break and we'll come right back in just a few minutes and we'll continue to work on the ocean and the sky, the distant uh, hills over here, which is a distant mountain range that kind of trails down into the ocean along the coastal uh, area here. And um, we'll just uh, keep working our colors and our washes and uh, having a great time. Okay. And I always mention, hey, if you haven't subscribed, right on the right-hand side below is the subscribe button. All that does is just basically you'll see my videos um, the next time you open up YouTube and you'll be kind of just, you know, aware that I'm making some new videos each week and you'll be able to watch along and uh, follow along with what we're doing here. And we're always creating new types of paintings, seascapes, landscapes, flower paintings, beach scenes. We're doing uh, figure painting sometimes. We'll do um, city scenes. So we do a lot of different things here. And I'm hoping you'll always come back to my channel and I'll always try to put as much information I can into my videos so that you'll learn a lot and see a lot of the techniques and methods that I use in watercolor that are really going to kind of take your paintings to the next level. And um, I'm sure of it. Many people have already um, been commenting in the comments section for many years now uh, on my channel saying that they've really come a long way and their paintings have gotten so much better since they've been watching here on uh, my channel here on YouTube. So there's no reason why if you're just starting out here, you're going to learn a lot. You're going to benefit tremendously. So uh, just keep coming back here on my channel and uh, watching. And I'm not saying you have to watch this channel only. Watch as many different uh, artists as you want to. Um, the only thing is I, I do mention, I do cover um, a lot of information here on my channel. So you'll get a lot of um, great uh, information for your uh, benefit um, so that your paintings are going to look much better as you go forward. Okay. All right. Be right back. All right, so we gave uh, the painting a little bit of uh, time to dry, and we're going to continue on here. So we're going to continue to mix some uh, ocean colors. And uh, I think this brush should be fine. We're working with a number 10 round brush, and let's continue here. Let's get some French ultramarine blue. We'll pick up a little bit of this here, which is some burnt umber, burnt sienna, raw umber, some of the warmer earth tones. And let's get some of this beautiful ocean color in, maybe a little bit of viridian in there too. And then let's start working in some ocean colors. Let's maybe start over here. And it's just a matter of building some ocean colors here. And we're graying down the, the colors a little bit. And it's kind of good if we can break up the, the waves a little bit. Maybe we go with a little darker colors here, maybe some greens. Add in some, infuse in some Viridian Green. Then we'll rinse off the brush. Maybe take the brush, rinse it off, and just have a little bit of a damp brush. And then maybe we can kind of get some more translucent, uh, transparent looking washes here underneath this darker wash. And then go back and get a little darker there. A little more French Ultramarine Blue. As we go out this way, let's sort of get some really nice, just some sharp lines across here. Maybe we'll put a little bit of land out here in the ocean, out this way. But I'm being really careful to follow that pencil line that we made with the ruler so that we can have a really nice level line across the picture, across the painting. A little bit of cerulean blue mixed in there too. And uh, let's kind of try to, let's 
see if we can get some a little bit of waves maybe there so we're going to try to leave some of those white bits of paper like so and this is all it is is having fun getting some washes on uh, the paper we're, we're creating the ocean colors we're trying to infuse in some blues and then some greens too some viridian green kind of nice mixture of colors um, So over here, maybe there's more light in the picture on this side over here. So let's leave some light of the water. So let's now use our brush and let the get your. Let's take our paint in the brush and let the paint. Let's expend and use up our paint in the brush, and then we can start dragging our brush across the paper like this, with hardly any water on the brush, and we'll get that bit of that feeling of light sparkling on the water by just taking almost like a dry brush and going across the the painting like this and what we'll do is we'll just keep doing that idea of trying to use up all the paint inside the brush here Like that. And then I added a little more paint and wash to the brush as it runs out completely. But I think this kind of works pretty good. As this comes over here, and then we do the same idea. Let's let the uh, paint dry off the brush like that and there we have some sparkles of uh, light coming across the water I think that looks good I think that's looking pretty good. So we're going to keep working our ocean colors. I think actually our ocean colors look pretty good right now. Uh, maybe some raw umber. Maybe we'll add in a little bit of that gold color, that raw umber, just in a few spots. Just to get the warm and cool effect of having some warm and cool in the painting like that okay now we can kind of get some more darker French ultramarine blue burnt umber um, burnt sienna a little bit of viridian and we'll do a little bit of this mountain over here hill it's almost like a mountainous area and then it kind of trails down into the water We'll leave a little bit of space between the water and the mountain here, just so it doesn't completely uh, diffuse into the uh, water and washes we just put on. Like that. There's a little bit of trees maybe. And some more trees over here maybe a couple of those kind of like and you can always take a small piece of paper towel like this and fold it up and make a little bit of a a little bit of a fold in the paper towel 
and then you can actually go in carefully and if you want to lift up a little bit of paint if you um, kind of painted over a section like on your water and you can do that and over here too you'd start with another bit of fold it over and get a nice dry part of your paper towel and you can do the same thing here so if your washes ever kind of overlap or something and cause a problem no worries take a little bit of paper towel fold it up and then just set it down on the paper and blot it just a touch and there you have it wow I think we're pretty much really let's just start working the clouds now in the sky and uh, let's do some cerulean blue let's make it a light sky and again let's not go too fancy let's just scrub in some wash maybe put a little bit of water on the paper too just some just some water it can be some water with a little bit of a uh, wash in there so you can kind of see the water is a little bit like bluish gray that's fine for this sky wash I think we don't have to worry about getting crystal clear water I think it looks fine this way and then as you can see we'll we're gonna put in some of the earth colors in here to make the clouds a little bit uh, gray and stormy maybe and then we can take that wash and go down here and then we start to make those long horizontal clouds as we um, so we'll get some more of that stormy looking clouds like this some of the blue of course we want the blue in the sky and again if you kind of have fun with your sky washes and just happily put them in there and not get too worried they tend to come out good that way I think so I'm just kind of making larger larger shapes up here you can also use some tissue and do some blotting as you go like that you can do some blotting and then as you get get the washes on the sky you can then you can start doing some more some really nice uh, kind of sweep them down in maybe one direction so let's come from this way and go this way and uh, that that should give us the effect we're looking for which is sort of like the wind in the atmosphere so when you have the wind in the atmosphere you have long beautiful clouds that drift across the sky and uh, let's kind of get that effect so we can do that with the our brush like this and then we're making the clouds it's kind of thinner and smaller like this and then I think that gets the effect we're looking for like this and kind of drift them all together like that then finally what we'll do is we'll we'll get a little raw umber and we'll try to get a little bit of a um I could do a little bit of a clean up here on my palette. Let's get a touch of the raw umber. Maybe a little bit of orange. And we'll just try to get some orange touch of just a tiny bit of orange along the horizon. There, like so. And that's all I can do. like that and I think once we get this uh, sky like we did here completed I think we're really doing well and we can balance some of this sky wash like this like that it kind of balances the picture if we can get a little bit of a darker wash over here and over here too so it's the earth colors the brown French ultramarine blue burnt sienna and then we take that and mix it in with French ultramarine and cerulean blue and then we have a good some nice feeling of some kind of a few stormy clouds like that
and it kind of looks good. And then we can take some water and just blend it on in. Like that, blend it up into the edges of the paper. Like that. You can also get that effect of some of the darker washes like this going right across. I think that really works good like that. And then again some blotting if you want with the tissue just to get some more lighter, maybe fluffier cloud kind of feel up here. Everything doesn't have to be super dark. Okay, so I hope this was fun. I think we're completed right here now. We, we actually have everything looking pretty good. We'll peel off our tape just so we have sort of a border, a white, crisp white border around this painting so we can kind of take a look and see how it looks. But I think um, we've had fun. We've covered the main um, themes of this design. So we had two main themes going into this painting, the design. And one, number one, the most important one we kind of thought to ourselves was let's make sure we have good depth, three-dimensional quality to this painting. And we definitely have that. Um, we could add some more details to the foreground, but well, we could do that actually now. But this is kind of the main idea. We could leave this as like sand. So this could be like sand. Um, we could add a little more burnt umber and uh, burnt sienna and some cerulean blue and we could do a little bit of um, this could be rocks where there's crevices in the rocks and you can kind of get in some crevices of rocks going in here like that So you can do that. That's kind of an interesting effect. That's, that should be fine. A couple of indications of some crevices in the rocks. Um, I might do a little bit of splashing here. Um, I always think splashing is kind of good. You can also take the palette and just tidy up a section of your palette right here, like that. And then we can get some fresh water. So we'll have some fresh, clean water. And uh, we'll take some titanium white, like this, titanium white. And then we'll add a little bit of our raw sienna to that titanium white. Like that. So we're going to make that titanium white a little bit of a warm white with a little bit of that titanium white. And now we can do some splashing. And what that does is that makes it feel like there's some waves crashing in. Especially along the tops of these rocks over here. The waves come in and crash up along those rocks so that's a perfect spot for some over here too that's all just a few of those splashes with some titanium white with a tiniest touch of some raw sienna or yellow ochre would work too um, or even a little bit of orange whatever kind of a warmer color you're looking for but not quite red maybe a little bit of orange very very tiny bit of orange if you have that if you have your raw sienna or yellow ochre or even some raw umber just to make that white, again, that titanium white a little warmer, because titanium white's pretty much like a stark white color. There's not much tint to it. So let's uh, call this one, and we'll do some... You can just do some lifting up of the white sp spots there. 
You can do a little blot blotting if you happen to happen to have an issue where, where there's some. But you can do some of that, kind of that lifting like that. And then you lift up a little bit of paint if you happen to go over the paint a little bit, the brown rock paint, the dark. A little more splashing there. With some white. It's a little bit of experimentation you do, a little bit there. But I think that does look pretty good. And then we can do a little more here, where this rock is here. A couple more splashes, and then we kind of just do that little bit of an uplift with the paint. Rinse off the brush, dry off the brush maybe, and just recapture a little bit of that top of that rock. Lift up the paint like that. Okay, we've had fun. That's the main part. Really a wonderful seascape to do. And again, our main idea was plenty of depth in the painting. All the steps back into the painting, the beautiful ocean, the rocks, all the waves coming in, then the distant mountains, all the way in the far distance, the mountains, and then the sky, and how the sky, the clouds, these clouds are large up here, closest to us. And then as the sky recedes back into the distance, you see the longer clouds going across which give us that feeling of depth going into the painting and a really great effect. And that's really a great um, uh, method and technique you can use to make your watercolors really exciting, especially like seascapes or city scenes, things like that. Um, land, you know, anything uh, with uh, kind of like that panoramic type of uh, style where you have like large, beautiful sp sprawling scenes that really works fantastic. And we also said, let's make our colors, let's mix our colors gray down our colors and we did that. We had plenty of grays here in the sky washes and in the ocean we added plenty of mixtures of different color paints and the same here in the foreground with these rocks here along the coastal area. So um, we accomplished our uh, goals here and let's just uh, enjoy this, put it into a frame. Let me see how this looks. That looks pretty good with a mat on there. On there, and uh, there's different. This looks actually quite nice. So, and then maybe we would have like a silver frame over, or around this would be nice. A silver frame, maybe a gold frame might look good. Okay, so uh, we'll see you on the next video, everyone. Thanks again for watching. And again, if you did like this video, uh, please give me a thumbs up. And also, too, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. On the right-hand side below, there's the subscribe button. And all that does is it just keeps you in contact with me as we uh, go forward each week and create new paintings. This way you can join along with us and uh, work along here and have a great time learning watercolor. And, um, okay, so we'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.